Nearly all tarantulas flip on their backs during a molt. Spiders don't have internal skeletons, so they can only grow by shedding their outer shell, or exoskeleton. Blood is continually pumped through the body cavities until the old skin starts to split. Molting can take 2 to 12 hours. It's an extremely vulnerable time for the tarantula. It can't go anywhere or defend itself until the process is complete. When they're very young, tarantulas will molt about four times a year. As they get older and bigger, they shed on average about once a year. Finally, all the body parts are freed and the spider tries out its new skin. But it's in fragile shape. Even the fangs are still soft. The skin is so delicate, it can easily split, causing the spider to bleed to death. It will take several days for the outer shell to harden. Molting also provides a chance to grow back any lost limbs, like missing legs. After all these efforts, the spider is weak and dehydrated. It stopped feeding before the molt, and it will be two or more days before it can eat again. What's left behind is just a shell of its former self. It's the time when giant cockroaches leave their dwellings in search of food. Or maybe it's the other way around. The tarantula is a pouncer. It captures prey by patiently lying in wait for something to crawl by. Usually, that thing is an insect. But tiny vertebrates, like this anolis lizard, must keep an eye out, too. Hungry tarantulas will pick up even the slightest vibrations of the ground. These tiny rumblings signal the arrival of a potential meal. The jaws of this Colombian lesser black penetrate like daggers, and the injected venom quickly takes effect. With the hours of the night progressing, more and more tarantulas are on the move. In the trunks and roots of the huge rainforest trees, many an eight-legged hunter lies in ambush. They are very patient. But the pit viper isn't, not on this night. Using special pits near its eyes, it's picking up the infrared signals, the body heat of nearby animals. But this may be more than it bargained for. A life and death struggle ensues. The Fer de Lance snake is one of the deadliest in the world, but it succumbs to the tarantula's bites. It takes several minutes for the paralyzing substances to show their full impact but the fight has already been decided. 
The Brazilian salmon tarantula works its jaws up and down to help break up and tenderize the meat. Then the digestive juices start to flow from the fangs. Tarantulas have incredibly slow metabolisms. This one won't have to eat again for many months. But in the case of unguarded nests, things are different. With the parents out in search of food, the nest is left behind, unprotected. Highly specialized tree tarantulas are nimble climbers and scour for food among the trunks and foliage roofs. Nestlings, incapable of flight, run the risk of becoming the victims of many prey snatchers, including this Ecuadorian red toe. It is more or less by accident that it will stumble on a nest during its migrations. It recognizes through its sense of touch that it is close to something edible. It's a cruel fate, but natural ecosystems are subject to harsh laws of survival. Other predators may likewise annihilate entire broods losses for which the parent birds quickly compensate by laying additional clutches of eggs. And of course, spiders need to watch out for their own kind. This one builds a trap door on top of its burrow. Then it lies in wait picking up the most sensitive vibrations from above. Not every attempt is successful, but the trap door can be reset in a jiffy. And if at first you don't succeed, Surprise. For those that survive, they'll take their place in the natural order and play an important role in controlling the insect population. Meanwhile, they'll leave us alone. So why not return the favor? Why not follow the old adage, if you wish to live and thrive, let a spider run alive. <laughs>